We're going to do what's called a sports mom jersey. Now this is on a piece of felt, but we'll give you an idea what the front of the jersey is going to look like. And we'll do a soccer mom one. You could do football, hockey, basketball. And this is a one color football mom one. Okay. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do that on the front and we're gonna do numbers and a name on the back. So um, we're not gonna, we're just gonna cut to the chase and get right to it. Oh, we need five yeah. things to do this with. You need a metal tray, you need some rhinestones, you need some hot fix transfer tape that's gonna pick up the rhinestones. And we need I would call a little sweeping pad to sweep the rhinestones and you need your magnetic templates. So we're going to show you how easy this is. This is going to be the outline color. So we got our M. This is a special design template set just for doing a sports mom. Now instead what you can do M O M which spells out mom but we're actually going to do a soccer mom one. So let me get that soccer mom template. So this is our uh, soccer ball that's going to replace the O. So all you need to do to break it out, you can break it out and separate it from the carrier sheet. Just give a little crease and pull that out. So instead of the O, we're going to put in the soccer ball. Line these up nice and straight. Now we're going to do some letters. We're going to add some letters to it. So we're going to put soccer above it. Now these, what we're using here is our aerial font, three quarter inch aerial fonts. And it's so cool, there's, there's no faster way of doing lettering. You just take each letter, slap it together, and now you just spelled out and get your template all ready to go. We got that all centered, looking good. So once you get your templates all set up, now what we're gonna do is pile on the rhinestones. The best way to do this is use a good amount of rhinestones, push that pile back and forth. You wanna be a little aggressive with this. What's happening is the rhinestones are bumping and grinding against each other. And as they do that, they knock out the ones upside down. So we'll give you a close up here. You'll see how they're all falling in there, shiny side up. So what happens based on the way the rhinestones are shaped, they're kind of pointy on top and flat on the bottom. If they fall on upside down, they're going to be a little wobbly. So they'll get knocked out of the hole. So like I said, you want to be a little aggressive with this. You should be able to feel the rhinestones bumping and grinding against each other underneath the pad. So not all that, I missed one here. So now I'm gonna sweep everything to the side. And we gotta look for any strays. Got one little extra one there. And it looks like I got them all filled in. So that's all there is to to fill in the men. So now we're gonna grab our hot fix tape. Separate this. So you gotta peel the clear side away from the white backer. You're gonna save the white backer, put that to the side. We'll use that again in a little bit. And you're gonna take your clear tape, stick your side down. You're just gonna lay that right on top of your design. Now I like to use the sweeping pad here because it kind of conforms to the rhinestones. You want to rub it down so you grab a hold of those rhinestones. There's a little flat top to them that it grabs onto. So when you peel it back, it's real important how you peel back. You want to grab the corner and pull back towards you, low and slow. If you pick straight up, Oh, we had an extra one in there. If you pick straight up, sometimes the small magnets want to come up. So low and slow is how it's done. Now what we're going to do. Oh, I didn't miss that one. 
Let me grab a pair of tweezers. I did have one fall off of there. Where'd it go? OBS here. And we're going to lay this right on top of our white backer. And now I'm going to rub it down again. I wanted to lay rhinestones all laying flat, all in place. And you'll probably see it a little better if I do this. Let me close up on it a little bit more. But now is the time to fix anything. So you can move them around underneath here if they're out of place. You can peel it back and replace one if it's missing. So it looks good. So we're gonna set that aside. And now we're gonna do the inside of the mom in red. So we're going to grab a second tray for our red rhinestones and we're going to again line up our templates. So this is going to go on the inside of the, of the mom. Oops, we need a soccer ball instead. So we're going to put the soccer ball, which are the dots on the soccer ball. All righty, so we got those lined up and we're gonna pour on some rhinestones. Zoom in a little more for you. A little bit easier to see with the red, but you see how easily they fall in the holes and they line up. There's probably, I'd say about 200 rhinestones holes that we're filling up. I'll just push back all the excess, move it off to the side, and double check, make sure they're all filled in. It's easy as that. So we're going to grab another piece of transfer tape. Peel that back. Set the white sheet to the side. And we're gonna lay that right down on top. This is our second color. So for every color, we're gonna do a different transfer. Again, peel back from the corner, low and slow. And we're gonna lay that right on to the white backer again until we're ready to heat it down. So if you're going to do 20 of these shirts, you can knock off 20 of these transfers and then heat them all down at the same time. So we're going to set this to the side. So we will do the front shirt first and then we'll move on to the back. So I'm going to set this tray to the side. I'm going to grab our shirt. So this is just a regular cotton t-shirt. Now when I'm doing something two-sided, we always want to put something inside the t-shirt so the front doesn't stick to the back. Occasionally the glue will melt right through the front and stick to the back. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, nice wool pressing pad and we're going to take a piece of Teflon uh, cover sheet and we're going to slide this right inside our shirt. This is going to give us a nice surface to iron on as well as there we go. It gives us a nice flat surface to iron on and the Teflon is gonna prevent the rhinestones from sticking to the wool. 
present shoe. Okay, we want to kind of get that centered the best we can. Looks good. So now what we're going to do, I like to press and iron it down for about 10 seconds. What that does, it gets all the steam out. Make sure it's all laying flat and smooth. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our soccer mom, the, the clear. We're just going to peel that back, put the white backer to the side. And we're going to line this up, get that pretty closely centered, get that centered on there nice and straight. If it's not nice and straight, pick it back up and place it back down again. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take one of those Teflon pressing sheets again and we're going to cover the top of it. And now we're going to layer iron on top. You can also use a heat press. This is, oh, this is what's called an easy press. So it's kind of cool. It's like an iron with a timer and temperature on it. So if you're using a heat press, I like to set it at 350 for 35 seconds. If you're gonna use an iron, I wanna set it at wool setting and do it for about 45 seconds. And you just wanna heat it. You don't wanna be moving it around. You're pressing this. You want the heat on each rhinestone for 45 seconds. So what we're gonna do here, since we can't cover the whole design in one shot, we're just gonna move it over again. So we press the timer again, let it run another 35 seconds. Um, but it's okay to heat some of Some of the rhinestones are obviously gonna get heated twice, it's okay. Um, they're gonna get heated a third time when we put the red down too. So you really can't heat it too much, but it's just real easy to do. So almost anybody can do this. There's really no skill involved here. So this is almost done. All right, now we let it cool. Give it about 10, 15 seconds to cool. What happens is the glue liquefies when it, when it heats up and it, it solidifies when it cools. Now we're gonna peel back again, low and slow. Just like that, perfect. And now we can save this hot fix tape to do it again later. Sometimes I've been up to get about 10 uses or more out of them sometimes, but you just lay it back on the white carry sheet of camline to set it aside and you can use it again later. So the next step is to put our red rhinestones on. We're just gonna separate that from the backer sheet. And see how that just lines up perfectly. Isn't that nice? So we just go through the same heating process. Again, we're not gonna be able to do it in one shot, so we're gonna do two presses. And that's about it. Some people will like, if you're doing two colors, they maybe do like 20 seconds on the first press and then do full 35 seconds on the second press because those first rhinestones are gonna get pressed uh, for quite a few seconds. This is like a custom template, so it's not really a font. So it's a sports mom set that comes with MOM, it comes with a bunch of numbers on it, and then you can buy the different balls separately. So you can buy a baseball, football, soccer ball, hockey puck, we have some uh, skating ones, and we keep adding more on. So pretty much whatever your kids are into. We can pretty much do if we don't have it, just ask. We can make okay, it for you. So that's good. Again, we're going to let this cool for about 15 seconds. And then just peel back low and slow. Beautiful. 
I'll give you a little close up there. All that probably, I'd say close to 400 rhinestones. Then what it take me? Five, 10 minutes. And I'm going slow, I'm instructing you, so I could do it in less than half the time. Oh, I should have left the pad right in there. So we gotta stick it in there again to do the backside. So we just open up the shirt, slide the pressing pad inside again. Okay, so we're gonna get this all ready, but we still gotta make the letters and the transfers to go on it, right? So I'm gonna set this aside just like it is all ready to go. And we're going to grab our clear tray. And we're just going to take off the templates we used. And we're just going to use our basic Smith name here. So all you got to do again, line up the letters, see how easy that is. And you're ready to knock off that name. So we just take the rhinestones again, pile them on, sweep it back and forth. Want to be a little rough with it. And they're all filled in already. Oh, I missed one over here in the corner. But you see how fast this is. It is incredibly fast, incredibly easy. Anybody can do this pretty much any age, five or over. And there we go. So we're gonna grab our hot fix tape again. Just double checking, I don't have any strays. Peel back the tape, set the backer to the side and lay that right on top of your rhinestones. Rub them down with a sweeping pad and then Peel back low and slow again. So next we're going to do the numbers for the back of the jersey. So we'll do those in red. So we have these big numbers. And all we're going to do is just line those next to each other. <clears throat> Grab our sweeping pad again. And just see how fast that fills in. So now all we're doing is sweeping off the excess. So many rhinestones on this one, it's hard to pick out the strays. When you get the rhinestones so close like that, they tend to grab a little uh, the stray, a little more strays seem to be on there. So we got one upside down there. So we missed two that I can see. So we can just go back with a pair of tweezers and pop those in very easily. But you see with this sweeping pad, it's once they're in there, they pretty much stay in there. 
And we just want to double check and get an extra out. I did find one more that was upside down that we want to get out. And we just grab one right side up. So this is probably at least four or 500 rhinestones. Ah, one more popped out here. It was upside down. When you got so many of them, your eyes get a little blurry looking at them. All right, they are all filled in now. Peel off our tape, set the backer to the side. And just lay it down on top. Rub it down, good. You really want to grab a hold of all these rhinestones well. And then we're gonna peel back again, low and slow. We're gonna lay that right on top of our backer again. Keep it safe. Oh, here's my sweeping pad. And again, I wanna rub it all down, make sure the grindstones all look good, didn't move out of place. Here's one that kind of moved out of place slightly. So I'm just gonna, with my fingernail, just push it back into place. And that looks great, perfect. So now we're ready to apply. So we've got our Smith, we've got our name, and then we got our number ready to go on the back of the shirt. Our shirt is all ready to go. So we're lining up our shirt here. Get that pad centered in, in, in the middle there. Okay, nice. And we'll start off by centering it. So we'll lay that down maybe a couple inches from the top right in the middle, nice and straight. And again, we're gonna cover it with our Teflon pressing sheet. And you'll see when we're finished, these are great shirts. You wear this to your kid's soccer game or whatever and all the other moms want them. So a lot of people make a little business out of it and make some extra money selling soccer shirts or baseball shirts or whatever it is you're into or your kids are into. Okay, again, we're gonna let this cool for just a little bit and peel back low and slow. Perfect. Okay, so now we're just gonna take our number Line that up where you want it on the back. Get it nice and straight. And again, we're gonna come in with our Teflon pressing sheet here. Hopefully we can get this all, yep, just, I think just enough to cover the full number. So we'll do this twice to cover both numbers. And that's about it. So, I mean, this shirt probably has, by the time I'm done, 400 rhinestones on the front, by about six or 700 on the back. So we're talking like over a thousand rhinestones. And if I wasn't teaching this, I could probably do this about five minutes.
So we're real close on the edges here. So when I peel this up, I want to make I'm going to make sure I peel up real slow in case I missed anything. Now, one thing too, in order to identify if you heat it hot enough, it should be pretty hot to the touch right now. But you can also, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's a little wrinkly. You can see the film is a little wrinkly. That's the way it should look if you heat it hot enough and long enough. So then we just peel back nice and slow. Voila. And again, we could take this and use that hot fix tape over again. I give you a little bit of a close up there. Here is the front. So we'll just kind of move it up slowly. But that's all there is to it. 